Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Reporter coming up here on today's show. We're going to look at an updated 53-man roster projection video after the five roster cuts made yesterday and the Tyree Gillespie trade. Now, yesterday's live show was insane. Like, there is absolutely no doubt about it. Shout out to Daniel Jimenez. Major shout out to David Zom, Buddy Bear, everyone that was participating. But if you didn't join our live show yesterday, the Raiders moved on from Demarcus Robinson. Nate Brooks, Tyrone Wheatley Jr., Vernon Butler, and Gary Green getting down to the 85-man roster limit. Also, there was some news that happened early today around the Chiefs. McCall Hardman, he was carted off the field, so you could actually see Robinson go back to Kansas City. The trade that went down yesterday is what's really made our live show go insane. The Titans, they traded for Tyree Gillespie. The Raiders received a late round conditional pick. My promise to all of you all the time is this. If breaking news happens, if there is major stories that need to be covered around the Raiders, we got you covered here. So hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because if big time Raider news happens, who knows, man? We might go live for one hour, two hours like we did yesterday where we went live for five plus hours. All right, let's now look at the quarterback room. Derek Carr, Jared Stidham, Nick Mullins, Chase Garbers. And my past 53-man uh, roster projections, I've ended up keeping three QBs because there were other players that I thought I just couldn't let go. Guess what? I'm only going to keep two quarterbacks this time. And I know I've been very vocal in saying I believe Nick Mullins is more talented than Jared Stidham. However, I do think that Stidham understands this Josh McDaniels offense a little bit more clear. So for that reason, he gets the nod over Nick Mullins. So we keep Derek Carr. We keep Jared Stidham. That's how this ultimately ends up going down. Now, y'all, if you're a real one out there, I want you to spam real one down there in the chat. And a real one to me is somebody who bleeds silver and black, somebody who's just a diehard Raiders fan. We had a lot of, a lot of amazing people come across our show yesterday. And I just want to say for me, Jeremy and Trace, well, I appreciate y'all, and I know you guys are a lot of real ones out there. Let's look at the running back room now. Jacob, Zamir White, Brandon Bolden, these are your top three running backs this upcoming season. What's really got interesting for me is I know the Raiders are going to keep Jacob Johnson, and I'm going to get a lot of questions I can imagine after putting out this video because I don't think Brent Brown makes it. I don't think Austin Walter makes it. It does come down to Kenyon Drake and Amir Abdullah, and this might be a surprise to some people. I'm going to keep Amir Abdullah instead. There was a report that came out that he could actually play a James White style of a role, and I think he looks like a good running back. The issue is... I don't think that the Raiders cut Kenyon Drake, so I might have to make a new video if Drake isn't traded. And the reason why I say you're not going to cut him is because if you do, you save only 250000 and it's going to be an $8 million dead cap hit. However, if traded after his contract restructure, you save $2.75 million this upcoming season. Yeah, you're going to eat a little bit of a dead money hit, all good. And then also if traded, you eat $4.4 million next season. So for me, I think Kenyon Drake gets traded before the season starts. But what do y'all think? Am I crazy? Do you disagree with me? We're actually going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. For those of you that don't know what that means, it means it's going to be the very, very top comment on the video. I want every single person to let me know why for yes and for no, will Drake make the roster? Let's now go to the wide receiver room here where you got Devontae Adams, Keelan Cole, Hunter Redfro, and in this video, before the Demarcus Robinson news came out, I didn't have the Raiders hanging on to him. I made a video three weeks ago on Chat Sports, tweeted it out at MitchellRent365 that Robinson's been a cut canner than me for, for weeks at this point. Why? He wasn't going to beat out Keelan Cole. The Raiders really like Matt Collins. And I have Las Vegas keeping six wide receivers. You know Adams and Renfro are going to be a lock. Matt Collins with his special team's ability, making a team. Keelan Cole is the best overall receiver, I believe, from Hollins, Tyron Johnson, and Cole. The Raiders like Tyron Johnson's deep field ability. Then they also really like DJ Turner, who adds some special teams value. They list him as a punt returner, kick returner style of guy. He had three catches, 58 yards, and a touchdown in that last preseason game against the Vikings. But for Demarcus Robinson, he got released. So he's no longer a member of this team anymore. And because of the injury to McCole Harmon, yeah, not so good news here for Robinson, but hey, I wish him the best of luck. Let's go to the tight end room now. Waller Moreau locks, but there is a, I guess, four-way battle, if you will, to who's going to end up making the roster. And I know that the Raiders are going to go with a two tight end set. I know they're going to end up using this. However, they have been using a lot of three wide, four wide sets. So because of that, I'm going to go with the guy that I believe is the most reliable out of that bunch. It's Jacob Hollister. 
You can make an argument that some of those players might be better blockers, might be better pass catchers than Hollister, but Hollister is just like Mario. You know what I mean? Like He's not great at anything. He's just average, and he's an average player at blocking, receiving, which is what I'm looking for in my third tight end. Let's go to the offensive line now. This was definitely pretty difficult for me. Obviously, I'm not going to keep Brandon Parker because he's done for the entire season or definitely significant, significant time. What was difficult here is finding the extra depth that I was potentially looking for. And the starting offensive line is featured, which all these players are going to make it. I also know that the Raiders are going to keep their seventh round pick Thayer Munford. You know they're going to keep Dylan Parham. Jermaine Illuminor is a really versatile player that the Raiders like a lot. Even though Alex Bars hasn't really played all that well, I think because of his past connections with Champ Kelly, because he played with the Bears last season, also he does offer some versatility on the interior offensive line. I have the Raiders keeping only nine linemen, but you know what? I look at all these players here, and I do have hope that they can be better, but... The Raiders need to go out and sign a player like Daryl Williams. Now, if you were spamming RO4L, that means you're a real one. So get yourself a real one for life t-shirt. Where? At the link that you see below, chatsports.com slash real one for life. These are the people like David Zahn, Daniel Jimenez, Buddy Bear, Arbora. I see you guys always watching, supporting Raider Ron. These people that buy these shirts or get these shirts, not only are they diehard Raider fans, but they're people that I know that have my back. They're people that always have the notifications on, that are subscribed, that are my super chat MVPs, if you will, like my guy Patrick B., Tony Santos. These were people who were absolutely rocking and rolling with me yesterday, rocking with Jeremy Chuggs and I, rocking with Trace Gerard and I during our live show. Hootie Lord as well. And I know these guys always have my back. So if you're a real one, please Get your hands on one of these shirts before David Zahn buys them all. Jatsports.com slash real one for life. Bottom, from the bottom of my heart, though, if you send in super chats like you did yesterday, I appreciate you guys. It, it really means a lot to me. Let's go to the defensive room now. Crosby, Chandler Jones, Cleveland Furl, Myron Tagovailo, Amosa, Malcolm Kuntz, Tayshawn Bauer. The Raiders moved on from Gary Green, and the depth here doesn't, really get me all excited. I got Crosby, Chandler Jones, and I believe Malcolm Kuntz at this point are a lock. What's going to be difficult, though, is what the Silver and Black decide to do with the other positions, and personally, I think it's a battle between Cleveland Furl and Tayshawn Bauer. I'm going to give the nod to Furl because from a contract standpoint, you can't really move on from him. And the way that I describe it, which is the easiest way, is either you're going to pay Cleveland Furl $9.98 million to play on the Raiders, or you're going to pay Cleveland Furl $9.8 nine million dollars to not play with the Raiders the only way that you don't have to eat all that money is if you trade them so if you trade away for all you save 4.77 mil this upcoming season sure you're gonna eat 5.21 but you already turned down his fifth year option you might as well if you can get at least something I, when I say something I mean literally like a seventh round pick I would take at this point for Klee if you believe that you can add extra players but do you think that Furl makes the team M for make W for won't make I think the only way he doesn't make the team is if the Raiders move on from him in a trade, which, fingers crossed. Let's go to the DTs, the big guys up the middle. The Raiders, they moved on from Vernon Butler yesterday, which was another pretty surprising move. I just don't think he was 100% healthy. But they've been really in getting involved with Andrew Billings, Tyler Lancaster, Kyle Petko. We're still waiting to get updates on when Bilal Nichols, Jonathan Hankins return. They're battling some injuries. Hankins told me that he's hoping to be back not this week, but next week. I'm hoping Bilal Nichols can at least also get on the field by next week as well. You know the Raiders are going to keep Neil Farrell Jr., Matthew Butler, the two rookies that they drafted. And right now, we don't really have any reliable defensive tackles. I'm just being 100% honest with y'all. It's our weakest position. I hope Las Vegas sees this video and they go out and get a player like Indomitian Sue, maybe like a Linval Joseph, a Sheldon Richardson, because the Raiders desperately need defensive tackle help, which is why I had to end up keeping six of these players. Linebackers, you're next up here. The three guys pictured, those are locked and loaded. Those are going to be your top three linebackers on this team. Divine Diablo, Denzel Perriman, Jayon Brown. However... When I look at some of these other guys like Darian Butler, Colton Bolton, Kenny Young, Lucas Masterson, Bolton was recently just signed. Masterson's been an intriguing UDFA. I just know that this Raiders team wants to keep a few extra players in terms of depth. Now, yes, they did lose uh, Kyler Fackrell. You lost Micah Kaiser for the season, so you could potentially look at adding another linebacker. I have Kenny Young making it. I have Darian Butler making it. If the Raiders kept only four, though, 
I think Young would still get the nod over Butler, though Butler's connections with Raiders linebacking coach Antonio Pierce, who we played with at Arizona State, I do think gives him a little bit of a boost. All right, before we get into the guys in the backfield, we're talking about secondary. If you haven't hit me up on Instagram yet, please do share your experience from yesterday's live crazy show by scanning that QR code right there. Give me a follow at Mitchell Ren 365 Major shout out to West Coast Rooster. Perez underscore C99, Spider05951 for giving me a recent follow on IG, staying up to date on the Raiders, and I promise you I'm going to show you guys some more love going forward on social media. Let's go here to the cornerback room. Anthony Averett, Nate Hobbs, Rocky Sim, all these players are going to make it. I believe that the Raiders end up keeping Darius Phillips as well because he was the very first player that they signed in free agency, and he gives you some special teams value. Drayvon Mullen, if he's healthy, he ends up making the roster, but I do see this team keeping six corners, and it's a battle between Sam Webb, Bryce Cosby, Chris Jones, Amik Robertson. I'm just going to trust my gut, and I'm going to go with the player that I believe is just the best guy, and I'm going to go with Amik, though the fact that Sam Webb started at outside corner this past week against Minnesota and played for a majority of the game tells me that the Raiders are trying to get a better look at him. Let's go to safeties now. The Raiders moved on from Tyree Gillespie in a trade yesterday, which means now it's Roderick Teamer. You got uh, Quintarius Cole, Deron Harmon, Matthias Farley, and then Palomeo, who is the UDFA at a USC. Merrick, Abram, Deron Harmon, locked and loaded. Those guys are going to make it. I originally thought that Gillespie would end up making the team, but because you see Roderick Teamer's back and healthy and he gives you more special teams ability, I have the Raiders keeping Roderick Teamer Jr., which then leads us to the final position group for my 53-man roster projection. It's special teams. But if you remember, earlier in the video, I talked about DJ Turner. And I talked about Amir Abdullah. Right now, the Raiders have Amir Abdullah listed as the starting kick returner. That's also a reason why I gave him the nod over a player like Kenyon Drake. On top of that, I think that you could see DJ Turner actually get some reps at punt returner because, let's face it, they want to make sure that Hunter Renfro is 100% healthy. Let's go now to the guys that are kicking it, maybe kicking it old school. You got Daniel Carlson, A.J. Cole, and then Trent Sieg. That's going to round out my 53-man roster projection after the first round of roster cuts and after the Tyree Gillespie trade. But let me know, who did I lead off my show? I, I know every time I do this video, you get a few comments like, man, I can't believe you left this player off. And I imagine most of you are going to type Kenyon Drake. And if you do, that's all good in the hood. I don't mind it. But let me know down in the comments, who did I leave off my 53-man roster projection?